From time to time our fish may become sick. In order for us to heal them, we need to know what the problem is. Very often the sickness is related to the conditions under which they are being held, it's especially water quality and most especially ammonia levels in the water. We've been through water quality, we know how to check the water. But let's assume it's not a water quality issue. Let's assume it's a disease issue. The first step is to identify accurately which disease organism it is that we are dealing with, as the treatments are different for the different species. The first step, therefore, is to prepare the microscope. We prepare the microscope by first removing the dust cover that protects it when it is not in use. Then we remove the lens caps off the lenses and place them somewhere safe where they are ready for use. The microscope is now ready for use. The next thing we need to do is collect the sample. We take the fish in the one hand and a microscope cover slide in the other. Move the end of the cover slide across the fish's body several times to get some of the fish's slime onto the microscope cover slide. We then place the cover slide on top of a microscope slide in such a way that the mucus is between the two slides and we squash it down fairly flat. Next we place the slide onto the stage of the microscope. In order to focus we use the fine button or the coarse button on the microscope. In order to move the sample around, in fact to move the entire stage, moving the stage either up and down or left and right. In this particular instance at the back right hand side is the on off switch and when you switch it on you can see the light shines from below through the specimen and into the microscope. We look down from above with both eyes open and focus the slide to look for disease organisms. What you are looking for is movement. Keep moving the slide specimen up and down and left and right in a regular pattern until you find some sort of disease organism. If you find something, identify it using the two disease textbooks. When we are finished working with a microscope, it is important to again pack it away and look after this very important but fragile piece of machinery. The first thing we do is switch the light off and remove the microscope slide. We then replace the cover lenses and replace the dust cover to keep the microscope safe. Next, we separate the cover slide from the microscope slide, turn the cover slide upside down and clean both of them with a bit of tissue paper. You may need to add a little bit of water to remove any scales that were stuck to the slides. When you are looking under the microscope for disease organisms, essentially you are looking for movement. In this slide you can see small tetrahymena organisms that are moving around rapidly on the slide. The background is in fact the scale of a fish, a single individual scale, which gives you an idea of how many times this has been magnified. White spot is another very common organism that you will see on fish. It has a circular body and the body appears to have sand grains in it, except for a window that is clear. This is the nucleus of the cell. The entire white spot organism moves slowly in a direction, as you can see in this particular slide. Flukes are also a big problem in fish farming, and here you can see this fluke is very active. On the right hand side you can see the mouth of the fluke and its anchors that are holding it in place, while the left hand side is searching for food. Even when flukes are dead you can recognize them by those large hooks on the right hand side of the body in this slide. A number of different chemical compounds are regularly used for treating fish. Potassium permanganate, sea salt, methylene blue, hydrogen peroxide and malachite green are a few of the more commonly used ones. Once you have identified the parasite or pathogen with a high degree of accuracy, you need to consult the disease textbook 
to determine which chemical you need to use, how long you need to use it for, and what concentration you need to use it at. In order to know this, you need to know the volume of water that you're wanting to treat. Never treat the fish for longer or at a higher concentration than has been recommended by the disease textbooks. And be very careful when weighing out the chemical to ensure that you get exactly the right quantity for treating the fish that need to be treated. The chemicals themselves are poisonous to the fish, so it is highly undesirable to treat using a higher concentration than is necessary, as this can poison the fish and even kill them.